Hello, 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 hello. This is Father Adam greeting you with more good news that I know you can use. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Here's some good news that I know you can use. John, excuse me, Luke, Luke chapter 24. The road to Emmaus, the gospel for this Sunday. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had happened. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there, these days there? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further, but they urged him, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they sent out and returned to Jerusalem. They returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. O oh, Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts. And be with us, for if you are with us, mm, then everything will be okay. If you are with us, then everything matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing matters. But we know that you are with us, and you are walking with us on the way, the road to Emmaus. Emmaus is a town, a small little village in a depressed valley. So they are going from Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the Bible is heaven. So they've left heaven and they are going into depression, into a hollow place. Hmm? Why? Because the Bible tells us they have lost hope. We had hoped. The saddest words in the Bible. We had hoped. We were hoping that he would redeem us but they crucified him. See, they have left Jerusalem. They don't want the resurrection. Why don't they want the resurrection? Because they realized that 
to get to the resurrection, you have to go through the cross. And they do not want the cross. Hmm? Like so many of us, we want the resurrected life, but we don't want the cross. Mm -hmm. We want it all easy. Huh? Isn't this the world we live in right now? Everything fast. Microwave faith. Drive through, huh? like at the McDonald's. We want it all fast. We don't want to wait. Huh? The ATM. God is the ATM machine. Give it to me like this. Huh? That's why right now, you know, all these people are taking Ozempic hmm? to lose weight. I mean, they're all going to Mexico and getting them from the pharmacies in Mexico because you can't get it here unless you get a doctor's order. Because uh, people want to lose weight fast. They want it all fast. They don't want to wait. You don't want to wait for years to lose weight. People have asked me, Father, how long did it take you to lose 185 pounds? Years. It took me years. No, but we live in a culture and a society that wants easy and fast solutions to complicated problems. And that's why people are getting their stomachs stapled. You know that 600-pound life, the TLC show? I like to watch it to see um, what is going on in our society. Huh? They just want the surgery. Give me the surgery. I want the surgery. Give me the surgery. I want it fast. I want my stomach stapled. I want it fast. You know, cut out my stomach. And 95% of these people, they say it at the beginning of the show, will gain back not just the weight that they may lose through the surgery, but they will gain back more weight. Only 5% of people are actually any successful in any of these things. Your hair will fall out if you get your stomach cut out. You lose your teeth. You damage your organs. And many, many people die. And yet, these centers and cutting people's stomachs out because you want to lose weight like that. You want it all fast. Huh? You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to eat right. You don't want to cook. You want to keep eating garbage. You want to keep going to the McDonald's and get the supersized hamburgers and then, ah, surprised. Why am I supersized? Well, huh? Because you're doing that stuff. That is the definition of insanity. Hmm? Keep doing the same sh stuff and expecting different results. Huh? You ain't going to get a different result if you keep doing the same stuff. Hmm? You don't want the cross. But you want the resurrection. Huh? To get to the resurrection, you have to go through the cross. And they realize this. That's why huh, they prefer Emmaus. They prefer depression. How many of you prefer your life of depression? You are depressed because you want to be depressed. Ah, you don't like to hear that, huh? I'm, I tell people all the time, you're depressed. You got to go to the doctor. You got to get antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds. You got to get help for your stuff. Oh, no, I don't want to get addicted to the drugs. You prefer to be addicted to your depression. You love it. Hmm? You love it. Just face it. Huh? You like being depressed. Because if you didn't, you'd do something about it. Huh? Oh, I tried all these drugs. Well, try another one. Huh? That's how life is. We keep falling and we keep getting up. Life is about falling and getting up because if you don't fall, you can't get up. That's why we fall in this life. And what doesn't kill us only makes us stronger. And we got to keep trying, keep fighting, keep at it. Huh? You've tried one medication, another medication, this and this and that. Try again. If you didn't try once, try again. How many people say, well, you know what? I'm so lonely in life. I'm so lonely. And loneliness is from the devil because the devil is in isolation. Emmaus, uh, where those two were heading, that is loneliness. That's isolation. Hell! And hell is the absence of people because it's the absence of God. Hell is isolation. You will not meet anybody in hell. Hmm? And so many people prefer hell to heaven. Hmm? I tell people, you know, you need, you need people in your life. Huh? Say you're lonely, huh? Well, get yourself a partner. Get yourself a suitable partner that God wants you to have. You know, get somebody, then you can get married. Huh? No, I already tried. I've been married three times. Uh, so what? Elizabeth Taylor was married eight times. Huh? Hello? Huh? If you don't succeed once, it doesn't mean you won't succeed again. 
but you don't want to try. You want to give up. That, that the defeat attitude is the devil's attitude. You are to have a victorious attitude, not a defeat attitude. Jesus was victorious. And Jesus is in you. And he wants you to be victorious, not to be defeated. Are you going to allow the devil to win? No, you will not. <clears throat> we smash the devil by trying, by fighting, by not giving in. You're lonely. you got to get yourself out there and start dating. And, you know, come on now. You're lonely. Get yourself into a group. Do you, I mean, Jerusalem. They, Jerusalem. The Bible wants us to live in Jerusalem, which means the Bible wants us to live in heaven. And heaven is what? Heaven is community. Where God is, is heaven. And God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity is a family. It's a community. God is not l aloneness. God is community. So you need community. And, you know, community is not just in church. Community could be in a community choir. Mm -hmm. Community could be in a dance group that you could get into. Community could be in a 12-step program. I go to a 12-step program. I have a wonderful community there. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Mm -hmm. I found better community there than in the church. <laughs> it, it, there's lots of ways to get community. Mm -hmm. No, don't go to the bar. Don't go to the casino. Don't go to any of those worldly places where there is no community there. It's just a semblance of community. You know? And also your virtual world, it ain't a community. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hate to tell you. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Huh? It's like people told me during the pandemic, well, I'm, I'm going to stop going to church now, you know, and I'm not going uh, to go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. I can just watch it on TV. Well, when you're hungry, why don't you put on Master Chef? Huh? I wonder if you're going to get filled that way. Huh? Hello? You need community. Jesus walked with 12 disciples. Hmm? 12 apostles? What is the 12? The 12 in the Bible is the church. The 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles. It means the church. Church is community. Ecclesia. Assembly. Huh? You need that in your life in order to have Jerusalem. Mm, Jerusalem is my destiny. I want to be in Jerusalem. These two, because they didn't want the cross, like so many of us in this life, we don't want the cross. Huh? That's why the most popular churches around, the Protestant churches, the evangelical churches, you know, the Pentecostal churches, all of those, they're the most popular. It's not the Catholic church. You know, the Catholic church is not popular. It's the churches that take away the cross right? The prosperity gospel, huh? not the churches that have the cross in them, like Catholic churches. It's the prosperity gospel churches, most popular. Huh? And what do they say? In church, you have to bring the Bible and your wallet to give your 10% so that the pastor can have his uh, mansion and his uh, um, private jet. You've seen all those reports about all these uh, preachers uh, in the mega churches they don't have a cross they hate the cross mm? and the bible says paul says let me not glory in anything but in the cross of the lord jesus uh, it's the cross in our life that's why we as catholics we wear our crosses proudly and we glory in the cross because it's through the cross that we get to the resurrection huh we don't take out the cross. We put crosses everywhere. Huh? That's why I absolutely detest all of the so-called Catholic churches, you know, the Catholic light, all of those. They stripped the churches of the cross and of our... Uh -huh. I don't like any of that. I want my cross in there with Jesus' body on there that reminds me that suffering is part of heaven. Uh, the cross is part of heaven. Jesus resurrects. His resurrected body still has nail marks. His side is pierced. Uh, he's still bleeding. 
That's why he shows them his hands and his side. And that's how they recognize him, because of his wounds. He's still wounded. Hmm? But we don't like the cross. That's why there was this big movement, even in the Catholic Church, to get up and take away the cross. Hmm? I walked in once when I first came here to Vegas. I walked into one of the churches here. And I was like, I can't believe this. Hmm? This is... They had nothing. There was no cross. Nothing. It was just like a, you know... Let's all hold hands and, you know, because we, we don't want the cross. We don't like it. I put the cross everywhere, everywhere. Oh, that's my grandma's faith. See, all these sophisticated people, you know, they're kind of sophisticated. I mean, you know, they may have all these degrees, you know. Like one time this one uh, priest was saying to me, he's like, well, I don't understand it. Why people like listening to me? They should be listening to me because I have, you know, in... I have a PhD. You know what PhD means? Piled high and deeper. He had a PhD. I said, I have a PhD. I have an MA. I have a BA. I said, yeah, all you're missing is the BS degree. <laughs> uh, uh, why? Because I'm simple. Get simple, people. It's so simple. huh? It's so simple. My grandma used to say, you know, uh, it's simple, stupid. Huh? Isn't that a saying in English, too? It's simple. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. I don't give you anything sophisticated. I give you a simple faith. My grandma's faith. That's what I give you. That's what brought her through what she was going through. That's what brings me through. And that's what needs to bring you through. Huh? That's why I pray the rosary every single day. And I recommend that to each and every one of you. Pray your rosary every single day. The devil hates the rosary. Mm -hmm. That's the Father Amort, the... Uh, Official Exorcist of Rome. There's a movie about him right now, too. He said, what the devil hates the most is the rosary. Hmm? In one of the exorcisms that I participated in, because I've participated in a few, we couldn't get the devil out of this possessed person. We just couldn't get the devil out. It was me and this priest who um, does exorcisms. And we couldn't get the devil out of the person until we brought an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and the devil started screaming, Mary! He said, Mary, get her away from me! Get Mary away from me! Because if I had Mary, I wouldn't be the devil. Huh? What do all these people, you know, in these mega churches and all that, they hate Mary, and they hate the cross. Huh? And there's lots of Catholics too. You go to the, some churches and there's like no image of Mary. I'm like, why do you people hate Mary? What has she ever done to you? Hmm? What has Mary done to you? Hmm? You don't have Mary. You don't have Jesus. We need to have Mary. Mary is... <laughs> I mean, at the wedding feast of Cana, I'm getting off topic here, which I never do, of course. You know, I never... But at the wedding feast of Cana, the people went to Mary. They didn't go to Jesus. Hmm? Love Mary. When we have Mary, we can fight the devil and we pray the rosary every single day and we go to confession you have to go to confession hmm? i just recently been to confession and it was absolutely a wonderful experience it was so good i felt so good hmm? to have all my sins wiped away ah, ah. you know there's nothing like a shower for your soul hmm? to go to confession so go to confession everyone find a good priest to go to confession don't just go to any joe schmo okay I pick and choose who I go to. My father once, he wanted to go to confession. And my parents are divorced. And according to the teaching of the church, he's not supposed to go to confession. Okay. But he wanted to. And when a person goes to confession, they're supposed to be treated very nicely. Well, this priest in Chicago was so mean to him. He's like, and what the hell are you doing here? You, you should not be here. And he threw him out of the confessional. Mm-hmm. And I said to my father, and what'd you do? I started to cry and I left. I said, I would have told that guy what he, don't put up with that stuff. Uh -huh. Nobody has a right to abuse you in that way spiritually. That's spiritual abuse. Uh -huh. It's one thing to say, you know, I can't give you absolution because you're divorced, you know, but go ahead and tell me everything, you know, and maybe we can work on your situation. But he didn't say any of that. He just said, get the hell out. Hmm? And my father started crying because he was very sad. Hmm? 
Now, if you've been mistreated in any way like that, once or twice, find a good priest hmm? and confess your sins to somebody who's nice. Hmm? There's a lot of priests who are very, very nice. Hmm? There's some who aren't, but that's like everything in life, you know. Like there's good and nice doctors, and you know. I mean, you're not going to go to somebody mean. <laughs> Well, it's the same thing in the priesthood. You got to find a good priest, okay? Find a good priest and confess your sins because your soul needs a shower. Oh, I might. Mine got a shower and it's very good. Huh? So they say we had hoped. We, have, we had hoped and now we have stopped hoping. Huh? We had hoped that he would save us. Mm -hmm. They... And then he opens the scriptures for them. Uh -huh. Now, one thing very interesting, you know, they're going on the op they're going in the opposite direction. They're going away from Jerusalem, and Jesus joins them on the way. That's a lot of hope for us, isn't it? Because even when we're going away from heaven, Jesus comes and joins us. Isn't that great? Uh -huh. That even when we are far from God. He gets near to us. Hmm? The further away we are from Jesus, the more he gets to, closer to us. I absolutely love Jesus, don't you? He's so wonderful. The more we get away from him, the more he comes nearer to us. Because he is after sinners. He's not after saints. Hmm? All the people who think that they, uh, you know, urinate holy water, hmm? Everybody's bad, you know, they're all pointing fingers and then, 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 you know, all these people are sinners, you know, and where are the good ones? Uh -huh. They cause a bad taste in Jesus' mouth because Jesus came for the sick. And the church is a hospital where the wounded go. Mm -hmm. We're not saints yet. We're on our way. We're walking. We ain't there. We haven't made it yet. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, is that even when we are getting away and we are on the wrong path, God joins us on the road to Emmaus. And he walks with us and he talks with us and he explains things to us. Don't you just love Jesus? And this is good news because so many of you are worried about your children who are away from God, who say maybe that they're atheists or whatever, you know, and they're on the wrong path. Jesus is walking with them. He's there on the road of their life. He's walking with them. That's why you should talk less, talk less to your children about God and more to God about your children. Hmm? If God can move mountains, don't you think he can move a small little heart? So you pray and don't you ever give up hope. Because hope for us has a name. The name above every name. Mm, Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend and confess that Jesus is Lord. Huh? Now they're downcast. The two on the way to Emmaus, they're downcast. The Bible says they're looking down. What'd you, go, what'd you do this morning? You got up? Were you magnifying and glorifying all your problems? Oh, my poor life. Oh. <laughs> My marriage. Ah. 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 What'd you do this morning? Were you magnifying your issues, your problems, or did you magnify and glorify the Lord? Mm. Did you get up this morning talking about all the stuff in your life, all that you have to go through? Or did you get up this morning talking about Jesus? See, I talk about Jesus when I get up. I pray. And I talk about him. He's on my mind. Hmm? So you have to magnify the Lord, glorify the Lord, talk about the Lord. Don't talk about your problems. Don't talk about things going on in your life because you don't have any problems. You just have issues. Face it. You only have issues. We only have issues in life. We don't have problems. And we're walking. They were walking. The Bible is all about walk. Early Christianity wasn't called Christianity. It was called the walk, the way, El Camino. That's why you have that movie but with Martin Sheen, El Camino de Santiago, the way. Yeah, it's a way. It's a walk. We're walking. 
We're not there yet. We're not finished products. We're works in progress. And your kids aren't finished products either. You've got to have a lot of patience. You have to be patient. Patient. Very patient. And accompany. Because the Lord accompanies us. He walks with us. So that we don't walk by ourselves. Isn't that wonderful? That we do not walk by ourselves in our life. That God always walks with us. And he talks to us. Mm. Mm. I could just pray all day and feel that presence of the Lord. I've been praying a lot these days. Mm. And I've been praying for you because I love you. Mm. Kisses. <laughs> the Lord is in our life. And if the Lord is in our life, everything is going to be okay. Mm. So they're downcast because they're looking down. Now, the down in the Bible is the world of the devil. The netherworld, the underworld, it's all the devil. The converted world, the metanoia world, is the world above. Metanus, no, the world above, that's where God is. Paranoia is the world down. Uh, so, you know, you live with your, with your, with your mirada, how you say that in English, with your um, sight raised up, hmm? with your, your, your eyes lifted up. I lift up my eyes to the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help hmm? comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, hmm. Our help comes from the Lord. God is so wonderful, isn't he? Isn't God wonderful? He's walking with us on the road to Emmaus. I think I gave you enough good news that I know you can use. Everything is going to be fine. We're all walking. We're not stuck. Hmm? And they're sad, aren't they? I think I should talk about that for a little bit. They're sad. The Bible says they're sad. They've lost hope. Sadness is a sign of the presence of the devil because the devil cannot laugh. The devil has no sense of humor. Mm? The devil's not like Father Adam mm? telling jokes all the time. Mm -hmm. The devil cannot party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The devil has a gloomy fart face all the time. Mm? That's the devil, vinegar face. The devil is in a constant funeral mode. Mm -hmm. Devil can't laugh. Whereas Jesus calls us to joy. That's why he made 600 liters of wine at the wedding feast of Cana. Mm -hmm. To give back the joy. Now in Genesis chapter 4, verse uh, 5 to 7, God asks Cain, why are you so sad and angry? Why are you sad and angry? And then the Lord says to Cain, because you are sad and angry, the devil is ready now to attack you. When you are angry and sad, you are fertile ground for the devil to attack you. Stop it! How many people prepare Mm. poison for themselves with hate, envy, jealousy, bitterness, resentment. All of these are poisons that you pre prepare for your enemies that you end up drinking yourself mm -hmm. because you're your own worst enemy. And I pray for you. That you let it go. Hmm? Stop always talking about what other people are doing to you. Stop it. Live the victorious life, not the victim life. Hmm? Stop talking about what other people are doing to you. Hmm? Stop talking about things, you know. Start talking about Jesus. That Jesus is in my life. Uh, and he wants me to be joy-filled. He wants me to enjoy life. Hmm? And not to give in to my enemies. Your enemies want you to lead a sad life. 
They'd like nothing better than for you to shh, hmm? take your own life. Hmm? You're going to let him? Hmm? The woman your husband cheated with, mm -hmm. you're going to give her the joy of seeing your marriage be destroyed? Or are you going to fight for your marriage? Hmm? She wants nothing better. She wants nothing more than for you to get divorced. Mm -hmm. Are you going to let her? No way. Your co-workers who are jealous and envious. Mm, that want to stick a knife in your back. They want you to quit. You're going to let them? No way, Jose. Huh? All these people who always brought you down. Who said you will never lose weight. They want you to stop going to the gym. They want you to stop eating correctly. You're going to let them? No way. Because they're the devils in your life. The devil has a lot of helpers. Hmm? Oh, yeah. It's through all the people. Hmm? All the hate-filled people. We're surrounded by that, aren't we? Hmm? By so much hate and envy and gloominess. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no fast solutions to anything in life. Hmm? Stop with this fast stuff, you know, I mean, this lady who came to see me because she's like, well, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Mexico and I'm going to have silicone injected in my butt. I said, why? Because it's, you know, it's loose. Loose, is that how you say it in English? It's loose. It's falling. My butt is falling and I don't want a fallen butt. She doesn't want a fallen ass. <laughs> ass is a biblical word. Hmm? I don't want anybody saying here that I'm saying something I shouldn't be, okay? Ass is a biblical word. Look it up. Jesus rode on an ass into <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> and she's like, well, my ass is falling. I need silicone injections. I said, well, get your, get your ass into the gym and start lifting weights. And then it's going to become firm. Huh? <laughs> no, I want to get injected. Huh? I mean, come on. You want fast solutions. That's the problem. Hmm? Everything, one, two, three. One, two, three. It takes time. It takes patience. Hmm? How long? How long is it going to take me? Honey, I don't know. Okay? I don't know. The Israelites walked in the desert for 40 years. Okay. Took them 40 years to get out of the desert and into Jerusalem. It's a walk. It's a journey. You got to walk. Hmm? Don't feel stuck. Because being feeling stuck is from the devil. So we don't want to do that. Okay. So you can't live angry. You have to live joyful. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Ugh, I need my sanitizer. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I think I talked about all of that. Okay. I wrote a lot. Ugh. Keep writing and writing and writing. I should write a book. In fact, I, I'm, I should do that. What do you think of that? Mm? I love to write. I love to write and I love to preach. Mm? Especially because when... I was, see, the devil has been after my preaching for a long time. You know, like the devil wants me not to preach. Because the devil doesn't want you to hear the good news. That's why the devil has been after my preaching for a very long time. Since the time I was born, God wanted me to be a preacher. And the devil has been after me. Because when I was born, Chernobyl exploded, the nuclear plant in the Ukraine and there was radiation poisoning all over Eastern Europe. And so I had radiation poisoning. But they gave me gentamicin as a baby. Gentamicin is an antibiotic that causes complete deafness in babies. I should be completely deaf. Every single kid that was given gentamicin in my town is now completely deaf. Everyone except me. Why? Because God has a plan. And the devil is not more powerful than God. 
Even the devil has to play on God's playground. Hmm? Even the devil has to play on God's playground. Oh yeah. How do I know that? Because I read the Bible. Huh? Job chapter 1. Job was idle. Walking around. And so was the devil. Not doing anything. The devil was idle. And God points Job out. And says, go after my servant Job. I will let you tempt him. But I will not let you do anything to him. No harm will come to my servant Job, the Bible says. And nothing happened to Job. He was fine. He had to go through his cross. As nothing happened to Jesus, he was fine after his cross experience. And nothing will happen to you. You will be just fine. As God had a plan for me in my life, and God has a plan for me in my life. God has a plan for you in your life. And there's a lot of devils that have stood in the way of the fulfillment of God's plan in my life. And there's a lot of devils who are standing in the way of the fulfillment of God's plan in your life. Hmm? That's how it is. What are you going to do? You're going to let them? No, you're going to keep fighting. And you're going to keep living. Because the devil wants you to commit suicide. As a lot of people have wanting have wanted me to do. It would have, especially religious people. You know that. I mean, right now there's all these uh, evangelicals who absolutely hate me in the Hispanic world. They just hate me because... I preach against the prosperity gospel. You know, the whole idea that God wants you to be rich. God doesn't want you to be rich. God wants you to be joy-filled. And if riches and money and things were a guarantee for happiness, the people in Hollywood, the actors, would be the happiest people in the world. All the rich people would be the happiest in the world. But no. Lots of rich people, all they're thinking about is injecting their ass with silicone or getting new boobs, the latest surgery. Can't put enough stuff in your face. I mean, come on. Getting new lips. That's the truth. That's their happiness. Drugs. Hello? Isn't it Lisa Marie Presley that just died? And her... Yeah, the daughter of the press of the pre of Elvis Presley and um, Priscilla Presley hmm? at fifty, a heart attack from. Huh? Hello, that's their happiness. Hmm? That is the truth. You don't want to hear it. I get it. I absolutely get it. Hmm? But the truth makes us free. Hmm? Everybody around is talking about getting plastic surgeries. They want to operate on everything. You should operate on your brain. <laughs> Get a brain operation instead of a boob operation. <laughs> or your ass operation. Hmm? Operate on your brain. That'd be better. Hmm? To see the life of God. Hmm? I mean, every single doctor will tell you, and psychologist and psychiatrist, that once you get your boobs done, you're going to want your ass done. Once you get your ass done, you're going to want your nose job. Once you get the nose job, you're going to want your lips done. It will never stop until you operate on your brain. Get a brain operation huh? to see Jesus, to see God in your life. That you don't need any operations to be joy-filled. You don't need money either. God doesn't want you to be rich. God wants you to be joy-filled. Mm -hmm. And joy is a byproduct of a life of faith. And faith is the ability to relax. To say, Jesus is in my life. Everything's going to be okay. I get up in the morning and I lift up my eyes to the mountains and I say, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, God is my daddy. And if God is my father, everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. For if God is with me, who can be against me? Hmm? Maybe I'm talking too much. Hmm? But I told you, you know, the Lord has preserved my ability to talk. And oh, has the devil wanted to shut me up? Hmm? But I, as long as I have breath, let everyone that has breath 
the Bible says, open their mouth mm, and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, for he has made me glad. Uh, he has. He has made me glad. And he wants to make you glad, letting you know that everything is going to be okay. Mm? Do the hard work. Stop thinking about the latest plastic surgery mm? or injection. Mm? Inject your brain with some faith. Mm? Go to confession. Confess your sins. That's a good shower. Mm? That'll be a good picker-upper. Mm, there was nothing good, better for me than going to confession. I love, I love our faith. Our faith is so beautiful. You know why we pray the rosary? When we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. We hear those words in ourselves. Full of grace, that I'm full of grace too. Mm -hmm. That I'm important to God. That my life matters. Mm -hmm. And that I got to live my life. Mm -hmm. Not just exist. The Lord doesn't want us to exist. The Lord wants us to live. Live. Huh? Have you been listening to Bishop Sheen? He's wonderful. I listen to Bishop Sheen all the time. Mm -hmm. Bishop Sheen. Life is worth living. Mm -hmm. in, Eng in English, I recommend him to you. Mm -hmm. A good picker-upper for us. Huh? Now, the rich young man in the Gospels. Look that up. Rich young man. Google it. He goes away sad because the Bible says he had many possessions. How many people are so into their possessions, into their money, and they lead sorry lives, always thinking about their stuff and their money? Mm? Mm? You can have all the stuff in the world, but if you don't have God and people, you have got nothing. Mm? You have nothing. Mm? You have absolutely nothing. Like I told you, if uh, riches and money were a guarantee for a joy-filled, happy life, rich people would be the happiest. Which means people in the United States would be the happiest because in the whole world, we are the richest people. Huh? We are the richest people and yet we are the saddest people. Hmm? Depressed. That's the number one drugs prescribed. Anxious. Suicidal. I mean, everybody's thinking about taking their life, like assisted suicide. I mean, it's legal. It's legalized in the Western world. How come nobody wants to die in the Ukraine? How come my family members who live in the Ukraine want to live? And here in the United States, I want to die. People say, I want to die. I want to die. I want to die. Huh? The cross is good. It injects you with the energy to keep living. Oh my God in heaven, do I feel like preaching now. <clears throat> to keep living. So you lift that cross up and you glory in the cross and you profess with me today that the cross is a gateway. It's a way <clears throat> to get to new life in Jesus. Oh my God. The resurrected life. Hmm? Isn't having God wonderful? I mean, it gives you the energy in your life. Huh? Absolutely. Gives us the energy. <laughs> I mean, people that stop believing in God, they don't stop believing. They have to start believing in something. You, just don't, you cannot just stop and then they believe in veganism or they believe in some other, you know, stuff going around. I don't know, you know. <laughs> they believe in some other BS. I mean, you know, some other new trend. You can't just stop believing. It's a natural part of the human being. We're naturally made to believe in God. Because God made us for himself, the Bible tells us. So you can't just stop believing. Then you're going to believe in something. I mean, you know, whatever. Whatever. Like uh, hugging trees, or I don't know, <laughs> making something, <laughs> making something your god. Uh -huh. So there's all these like young people today. They're all into all this stuff that you know didn't exist when I was growing up. Because they have to believe in something. Stop believing in God. So they believe in whatever. Uh -huh. 
And that makes me really sad because, you know, the church has become irrelevant in the lives of so many young people, especially my generation, the millennials. I'm a millennial. Um, you know, the church has become irrelevant for a lot of reasons. I mean, a lot of it is our own fault, but I mean, society's fault and all of that. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of, I could come up with an analysis of things, but a lot of that has to deal with, we don't want the cross. And we have to preach the cross. We have to preach the cross. Hmm? Not this prosperity gospel BS. It's hogwash. Hmm? God doesn't want you to be rich. The reason why they preach that is because then they can say, well, in order to get rich, you have to give your 10%. Hmm? I won't tell you. It's in order for the preacher <laughs> to live a luxurious lifestyle. I won't say that, of course. No. No, they won't say that for him to. I mean, it's so anti-gospel. Jesus was a poor man. God, his father, gave him poverty. Hmm? Poverty is a good thing. Poverty is not a bad thing. Hmm? Being poor isn't bad. Hmm? If, I were, if I didn't have the experience of poverty, I wouldn't be who I am today. Hmm? And I, I really, I mean, I try to lead a very simple life. I really do. I have an apartment that I live in. I cook for myself. I don't like going to restaurants. I lead, I have a very simple car. Um, I give away most of my money, whatever money I get, I give it away. I have to give it most of it to my family because I have a grandmother. I have to send her lots and lots of money um, for medical things. Things in Poland are more expensive than they are here in the United States, believe me. Mm -hmm. And to go see a doctor, because it's socialized medicine, you have to get on a waiting list. or So you have to pay in order to go see doctors privately. It's horrible. The medical system in Poland, mm, horrible. But I'm getting off topic. Mm, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. It isn't any better here, but you know, that's why my parents, now my father and my stepmother, they live in Mexico for the health care. Health care is wonderful in Mexico. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I've gotten such good care in Mexico, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Next to every pharmacy in Mexico, you have a doctor. You can go see him for free. I'm going to give him a tip, of course. But where is that anywhere else? Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you bad things about Mexico. You know how they talk about that there's violence in Mexico? <laughs> Have you seen the United States? <laughs> Welcome to Vegas. I mean, there's violence galore here. <laughs> Murders galore. In Chicago, you can't walk down the street and they're going to tell me there's violence in Mexico? Hello? <laughs> My parents live now in Mexico. I feel a lot safer in Mexico than I do walking in some of the streets here. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, they just want to uh, brainwash us. So, anyway, you know how I get off topic sometimes. But I love you very much. Have a beautiful Sunday. And uh, go out. It's beautiful outside. Take a walk. Exercise. Cook. Stay out of the restaurants. Mm -hmm. Don't eat in restaurants because you don't know what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Don't use a lot of salt. Drink a lot of water. Get yourself checked out by a doctor for your blood pressure and everything else. Okay. And uh, anyway, have a beautiful Sunday and let's go to Jerusalem. <laughs> God bless you.